So I will skip about uh, how to write uh, a good scientific paper. And let me start saying that there is not a magic key to do it. When I was here in Barcelona, a day that I was particularly depressed because one of my papers were re rejected, one of my mentors told me to write and to publish a good scientific paper is quite similar to win a soccer game between you, the author, the editor, and the reviewers. So to win the game, you need time, outstanding knowledge of the topic you are dealing with, will and personal commitment, inspire critical thinking that is probably the most important thing, and novel and solid data availability. I have imagined a 16-step labor to prepare and to publish a paper. And let me move from the first one. That is probably the most important. You should ask to yourself, why I want to write and publish this paper? You should ask to yourself, are my data new and interesting? Are my data showing something challenging on uh, a specific topic? Are all my findings strongly related to a current topic? And overall, are my findings capable to provide some solution, some perspective for patient care or for public health? If all the answers are yes, please go on drafting the paper. If there are some no among the answer, think carefully if it is worth to draft the paper. And please do not do it only to get an extra publication. As academic journals, we are facing a problem of hyperprolific. What does it mean? If we fix a threshold for the definition of uh, hyperprolific author randomly, for example, more than uh, 72 papers in a year, that means one every four or five days, the number of hyperprolific authors increased during the last uh, 15 years from four to 81. And if you ask it, uh, to the 81 hyperprolific author, it, they fulfill the, the four major criteria for authorship. Most of them didn't answer. That is an answer. But uh, most of the responders stated that they did not fulfill the four major criteria, or at least one among them, in more than 25% of the cases. Let me have the final comment. Most of these papers are not useful for science. So let me go to the second step. What type of manuscript should I prepare? You have different format, full original paper, short brief communication, letter to the editor, review and positional paper. So you should put to yourself or better some time to a colleague, to a supervisor, that may have a more clear idea about you and your findings. If uh, your findings are sufficient to support a full original paper, if you need to publish something very, very quickly, do not forget that you can ask the fast track also for a full original paper. And if you have uh, enough expertise, enough recognized personal prestige to propose yourself as an author of a review or a positional paper. Then the third step is to choose the right journal. And the first thing I want to highlight is to avoid gambling by scattering the same manuscript to different journals at the same time. Because this is not a correct behavior. And if it is discovered, this is misconduct. And it can be discovered. 
because a different journal trusts the same reviewers. So a reviewer may receive the same paper for two different journals, and this is the starting point for an inquiry that will involve your academic institution. Then the right thing to do is to look to your main publication on which you have built your research program, because this will narrow the list of the candidate journals. And then look at the last issues of each potential candidate journal, looking to the topics, looking to the type article they are accepting. Choosing the right journal, do not forget to look at the position of the journal in the ranking. You know, because if the rejection rate of the journal is higher than 90%, like in the Journal of Hepatology, you should be very sure about the novelty, the solidity of your data to have some chance to publish your paper on those journals. Otherwise, it is better to use uh, humility, modesty, by concreteness, and send the paper to a journal with a lower impact factor. This will save your time and also failure to publish the paper. What about uh, the fourth step? Once uh, you have decided uh, the journal, please download immediately the guide for authors. Do it at this point, not when you have already drafted the paper. So you can prepare the paper using the correct layout for the text, the correct format for tables, figures, references. This will save your time first, but also the time of reviewers and editors. Reviewers and editors hate busting time Angling a poorly prepared manuscript. They feel this like a lack of respect for their editorial work and for the prestige of the journal. The fifth step, how to write the journal. The journal should be written according to the INRAD format that was introduced by the American National Standard Institute in 1979. What does it mean? IMRAD means introduction, methods, result, and discussion. But in spite of this, I suggest you to start to write the paper from the result. Why? The reason is simple. It's the only way you have to be sure about the scientific relevance of your findings. Then move back to the methods, then go ahead to the discussion, and at the end, introduction, abstract, title and keywords. In doing so, try to be concise and focused because if you introduce too many things in the paper, the paper becomes too diffuse and less challenging. Avoid the salami science. Sometimes it is useful if you have some complementary secondary findings to leave them out looking for uh, the possibility that the reviewer will ask for them. This uh, will address one line of criticism of the reviewer. It will increase your probability to reply in an effective way to the reviewer. The seventh step, the result. Here you should uh, answer the question, uh, what have I found? And the results are crucial because the discussion should be organized around the results. The result should be presented in a very simple, logical order, making the story easy to understand. The result should be organized around illustration, figures, table, without reiterating the number still present into the text. Use the past tense referring to the result in a passive way, in an active way, do not insert any comment in any reference here, just the results. And you know, you should be aware that uh, an illustration is worth thousands of words. So illustrations are crucial for the presentation of the result. 
tables and figures. According to the guide for authors, so you can decide the number of table or figures. Table if you want to highlight number, figures if you want to highlight comparison between uh, mean, medians, gradient, and so and so and so. Whatever the choice, illustration should be self-explanatory with very complete and clear legends. The reviewer and the editors hate to have to go throughout all the paper to find out symbols, abbreviations, categories that are in the figures, in the table, but not explained in their legends. So what about methods? Here you should answer the question, how do you find it? And you know, if the methods are new, you should spend time and go into the detail in the description. Otherwise the paper can be rejected because the methods are judged incomplete or not clear. If the methods are well established, you can summarize them using also the supplementary material and inserting here some key references. What about discussion? Here you should answer the question, uh, what do the results mean? This is uh, probably the easiest section to write, but the hardest to get right. And so many papers are rejected for weak discussion, not focused discussion. So here you should compare your result with those previously published and do not avoid to comment who are different from your results. Here you should try to convince the reviewer first and the reader after that your results are much better, are much complete and can be used in clinical practice. It is important in the discussion to start answering the main question or supporting the new hypothesis that you will put at the end of the introduction. It is important to avoid the statements that go beyond the mean of your result. Some speculation can be inserted, but based on facts and not on imagination, avoid imagination. Avoid also to insert in the discussion abbreviation, definition, uh, uh, categories that were not well explained before in the manuscript. Finally, it is important some rule referring to your result, use the past tense, referring to the previous published result, use the present tense. I like the strength and the limitation of your research I like the possible secondary findings as a, the last paragraph of the discussion and sometime in a special section of the manuscript, you should write the conclusions. The conclusion should justify your research and, so, and should highlight the scientific relevance of your research. So you should avoid some common mistake. Do not make again the list of your main results. Avoid trivial statement on the result. Here you can highlight the extensions, the use, if appropriate, of your findings, and also the need of further confirmation of your findings. Let me go to the introduction. Here you should highlight the gap that there is on knowledge on the specific topic you are dealing with. Moving from a general point of view, going to a specific point of view, and then down, making a clear cut question or suggesting a new hypothesis. Here you should introduce a number of uh, citations, not too many. Avoid the works that are not relevant for your paper. What about the abstract? This is the first advertisement of your paper, you know? We are flooded by papers, so we should be very selective. And we usually select on the basis of the title and of the abstract. Let me confess that many readers, but also some reviewers, will not go beside the abstract 
if the abstract is not clear, complete, and self explanatory. So the abstract should look like a mini paper. Probably you should write the abstract several times before to get the final version. And I will suggest that once you have the final version, it is useful to check the final version by a medical writer. Some journal will offer you this service. This will make your abstract more attractive. The same for the title. That should be declarative, short, and clear. No more than 10, 15 words. Please remind that the paper with the short titles are the most cited. Avoid technical words, jargons in the title. What about the keywords? They are relevant for the potential of citation of your paper. So according to the guide for authors, please decide the number, avoiding technical words and words that are still in the title. Avoid also words with the too broad meaning. Let me skip over an old event. I want to go to the references. That should be updated. But you should not inflate your paper with too many references. Avoid excessive self-citation, excessive citation from the same research groups. And finally, try to use the new software we have. So a note, Mandalay, to reduce the possibility to make mistake in listing the references and match the references with the citation into the text. What about the cover letter? Not just a detail, it should be smart in writing the cover letter. Some information should be present, always present. So for example, the title of the manuscript, the date of submission, a brief description of the background and of the relevance of the manuscript, the corresponding author, the contact information, the statement that the paper was not previously published and that uh, the paper or part of the paper is not currently under evaluation by other journals. Sometimes you can add something else. You was invited by an editor after a presentation to send the full paper, you can mention this uh, event, you can list uh, some preferred reviewers with the contact information, you can highlight opposed reviewers, you can make also some other disclosure. But please, in the cover letter, avoid some common errors. The first one is to be wrong about the name of the journal. The second one is to be wrong about the name of the editor-in-chief. The third one is to use humor or to make statements that uh, uh, try to uh, over embellish your findings. So this is the first time that uh, we proved that uh, this is a change of the paradigm we have up to now. Finally, at the end, before to send the paper, be aware to check some uh, very simple things, but you should do it. I think I give uh, some suggestion to win uh, the game and to publish the paper. Thank you very much for your attention.